Lesson 4. Following the Thread of Desire It is with great joy that I walk with you on the way that you have chosen, for in truth there is not a time I am not with you. There is not a place to which you can journey where you will not discover my presence. Only reality can be true, and reality is simple. There is but the simplicity of love. From that ocean there is birthed the multitude of forms, a multitude of worlds, a multitude of creations, of which you are one. Like waves arising from the sea, these creations remain linked eternally to their Creator. You are a wave arising from the infinite ocean of love that is the presence of God. I am a wave that has arisen from the ocean of my Father's holy mind, and though two waves seem to appear separated by what is called time, by even two thousand of your years, when seen from a much broader perspective, those waves have arisen simultaneously from the ocean surface. They arise for the very same purpose, to express the simplicity, the innocence, the beauty, the creativity, the truth, and the reality of the ocean itself. The waves delight in expressing what seems to be a unique individuality, yet they carry the common thread of being made of the same substance and are truly governed by the same law of creation. They know not the moment of their own arising, for only the depth of the ocean unseen can know the moment when it chooses to well up and to create the expression of the wave. The power that is not seen but is hidden in the depth of the ocean rises up and forms that wave and sustains it through the duration of its expression. It is from the depth of that ocean that it is decided when the wave shall return to the sea. Does that mean it disappears? Only from one perspective, but in reality the very substance that was made manifest truly has not known birth and death, but only expression. What if you were to consider yourself as a wave arising from the holy mind of God, born of God's infinite desire to expand herself, to express the infinite nature of love and creativity, what if you began to realize that all you had called yourself is the effect of love, that you did not cause yourself to come into existence? And yet, as you have arisen from the ocean of love, is not the wave made of the same substance as the sea itself? Are you not given infinite and perfect freedom? For just as your father perceives you, you are given the freedom to perceive yourself, and all of the other waves you might notice even the ocean itself in any way that you choose. The goal, then, of genuine spirituality is to realign the quality of your perception, to mirror, to resonate with, to be in perfect alignment with the perception of your Creator, to see with God's eyes. Beloved friends, in truth, you remain as you were created to be. This means that in each and every moment you are literally using the power found in the silent depth of the ocean of God's love that gave rise to your very creation and existence to perceive as you desire. Therefore, in this lesson, we will address the very nature of desire itself. We will address what it means, what it signifies, and how it creates effects. We will address the power of desire, the value of desire, the meaning and purpose of desire, and how to begin to bring that energy, which at times feels like a team of a thousand wild horses, all wanting to go in their own directions, under your conscious and deliberate direction, so that you might create as your Father created you, with perfect, deliberate, and infinite love, with perfect, infinite, and deliberate joy, and with perfect, perfect freedom. Desire. When I walked upon your planet as a man, I confronted many different opinions about the nature of creation, the nature of humankind, and the nature of consciousness or self-identity. Just as you are now confronted with many schools of thought, so too was I. While that can seem to lead to great confusion, as though one must choose from the smorgasbord, it actually serves not unlike the sand inside the oyster from which the pearl will come. It causes you to great inside. You must find your own way to your own truth. For before each and every one of you lies your pathway, a doorway, an eye of the needle through which only you can fit. Therefore, in some respects, you are seemingly alone. You must make the decision to desire, above all things, awakening into perfect remembrance of your union with God. Just as a wave might finally decide that it has been birthed not to be fearful of being a wave, but to truly claim its individuation, its uniqueness, and to live that fully. And in that fullness, it decides to discover a way to be aware of its infinite union with the ocean itself. It decides to somehow break free of the myoptic self-identification as one little piece of wave that arises in a place or a field of time that lasts for but a second and then disappears. Just like the wave, you can decide to find a way to transcend limitation, to become re-identified with a consciousness, a living awareness that you are one with the depth of the sea. Decide that you can operate not from the superficial level of awareness that might be like the foam on the tip of the wave, which you call your conscious or egoic mind, but that you can become informed in all that you speak, in all that you do, in all that you create, and all that you perceive by that which rests in the very infinite depth of the ocean itself. 
Imagine then, drawing upon a well within you that seems to have no bottom and sides, through which something is pouring forth from places unseen, in which your literal conscious attention or awareness seems to be colored with radiant light. A light that literally leaves you feeling that you are not the body-mind or the personal history with which you have identified before, and an awareness that these things are only temporary and very impersonal effects of a level of desire within your soul, which is one and the same thing as the love of God expressing itself, for no other reason than that love must be extended. Imagine transcending your fear of your own survival, because as you look upon your body-mind, you are no longer identified as that body-mind. It has become a tool to be utilized by the love that rests in the mind of God. You live, yet no longer you, but Christ dwells as you. This is a very real experience to be lived. It is not just a philosophy. It is not just a concept, and it can never be a dogma. There is a mystical translation that occurs in the depth of the soul, which is merely a shifting of where you perceive your sense and source of identity. What is the energy required to take you from my optic self-contraction, in which you have become identified with the little drops of foam out of the tip of the wave that are tossed to and fro by a power that seems to be outside of you, to a sense of identity with the silent depth of the ocean that is everywhere present and seems to know no beginning and no end? The very energy that will carry you from the tip of the wave to the depth of the ocean is the energy of desire. For I say unto you, if God had not desired to extend love, you would never have come into existence. Your very sense of awareness of self is the result or the effect of love. It is the very same love that has birthed the sun and the moon and all the stars in every dimension, upon dimension, upon dimension of creation. That very love that desired to be extended is the very source from which you have been birthed. As you know yourself to be, you are the effect of God's desire to extend love. When next someone asks you, who are you, please do not give them a name. Do not say, well, I was born in a certain town in a certain part of the planet. Do not tell them that you are a Democrat or a Republican or a Communist or an Atheist or a Catholic. Tell them the truth. Who am I? I am the extension of love and form. I have never been born and I will never taste death. I am infinite and eternal. I shine forth as a sunbeam to the sun. I am the effect of God's love, and I stand before you to love you. Now that will raise some eyebrows. It will also transform your world, for it is time to stop seeking Christ outside and start choosing to take responsibility for being Christ incarnate. Desire is everything. Take a moment right now and let your body relax. Imagine that you can move back from being the actor in the play of your life to being the director and the producer. You are sitting in your studio and you are editing the story of your life. You are looking at all your little clips of film. Clips from the time you were birthed, the time you went to kindergarten, the time you first fell in love, the time you first decided to go to the movie, the time you went off to college, or the time you took a job, this job or that job, or the time you moved to another physical location. Look closely and see if it is not true that for every action you have ever done, for every decision you've ever made, after trying to analyze it all, is there not underneath it all the energy of desire? In truth, you do not lift the body from your couch to go to the refrigerator without the desire to eat. Something calls you into an expression of action. It is desire. No one enters into an intimate relationship without the energy desire. For what two have ever looked upon each other and said, I don't feel any desire whatsoever, but let's get married, have children, and raise a family. Desire is that energy which brings forth all ways of creation out of the depth of the ocean itself. And yet, who among you has not felt conflicted about desire? Who among you has not been taught that desire is evil? Who among you has not been taught not to desire to be great? Who among you has not been taught that the desire for material comfort is some sort of a blot on a spiritual path? Look well within your soul and see that this is not true. Have you not feared at times the welling up of desire within you? For as I look upon your plane, there are many who have become paralyzed with fear just because they desire to have a bowl of ice cream. So afraid that if they are given to that desire, something in the ice cream will cause their body to blow it and their brain to cease functioning. For those of you in an intimate relationship, marriage, or a commitment of some kind, how many of you have not carried the belief, taught to you by the world, that if you feel an energy of desire welling up within you, when you look upon someone who is not your partner, somehow you have sinned against God? How many of you do not know the experience of trying to rein in a 10,000 horses so sure that if you gave into the feeling of desire that everything would run amok, and that your attempt to keep your life structured, rigid and predictable would collapse and all hell would break loose? Yet I say unto you, 
Would you exist if God had feared the desire to create and extend love by forming you, at the same time giving you infinite freedom of choice? Without desire, look around. Not only would you see nothing, there would be nothing to do the seeing. Everything is the effect of desire. Come then to see that desire is not evil. It is not to be feared. It is to be mastered. Mastery is not control. For control, the need to control, is an effect of the energy of fear, not love. Mastery of desire comes when you recognize that you are safe to feel whatever wave of desire might come up through your consciousness, because you decide whether or not you will act on it, whether you will bring it into the field of manifestation. The power of choice is the one power that can never be taken from you. You already have perfect mastery over it, because nothing you ever experience comes to you without your decision to allow it into the field of manifestation. Desire is something that wells up from the depth beyond yourself that can be looked at with perfect innocence and with the wonder of a child. The very act of turning to allow and welcome desire is not something that will sidetrack you from the path of awakening, but will take you vertically into the heart of God. For if you are to ever create as God creates, you will need to heal your conflicted perception about desire. You will need to transcend that energy of fear. There are many who will call unto me and pray. This is not an hour in your time frame in which there are not many upon your plane, somewhere on your planet, who are praying to me and want their hearts to be filled with Christ. Yet at the very same time they are scared to death of an energy that wants to move, because they have been taught to fear and to suppress desire. Desire is like the liquid of life that moves through the stem of the rose and allows the petals to radiate with glorious color. When you block the flow of desire, the petals cannot be nourished. Death begins to occur. Death of the heart, death of the soul, and lifelessness. If you were to walk down one of your city streets and to truly look into the eyes of everyone you see, would you not recognize that death seems to have already made a home in the minds of many that are living? Death of dreams, death of hopes, death of worthiness, death of playfulness, death of true power, and death of union with their source and creator has already taken place. Everyone who reads these words has had this experience of seeing this in others. Healing requires the willingness to feel desire, to see it as good and to see it as holy. Does that not mean that if you feel the desire, that it might not become twisted by the egoic pattern in your mind? Of course not. There is always the possibility that desire will be twisted to meet the needs of the egoic mind within you. But rest assured, if it does, who has done it? You. Always within you, you have known that desire is good, but you suppressed it. These times when desire comes forth and you let it become twisted into serving the goals of your ego, you always knew perfectly well what you were doing. You were the decision maker. You have learned, therefore, to fear desire because that fear is the effect of fearing yourself, and that is what cripples you. That is what cuts off the creative flow. That is what leads to everything your world knows as the multitude of psychological diseases, an unwillingness to trust oneself, an unwillingness to love oneself, and the belief that the desires that move up through your beingness are somehow evil and dark. You think that if you could only stamp them out of your being, you could remain in control and everyone would like you because you would conform to the smallness and the littleness that is worshipped in human consciousness. Understand well the next axiom we give to you. The only relationship that holds any value of all is a relationship with God, your creative source, the depth of the ocean. Right away the mind says, but what about my mate? What about my parents? What about my children? What about the President of the United States? What about the Postmaster? You will come up with a million examples of relationships that surely have great importance. The only one that holds value is your relationship with God. For when that is in alignment, all of your creations, your choices for relationships, and how you will be within them will flow effortlessly from that alignment. Therefore, seek first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. Do not try to create a rose by starting with the petals, but nourish the roots, and the flower must blossom. If you are to be in right relationships with your Creator, it is absolutely necessary to correct your perception and relationship with the energy of desire. It begins by releasing your judgment of it in all of its forms. For again, you can only be in love or fear. You can only be in innocence or judgment. Love and innocence are the kingdom. Fear and judgment are an illusion. Releasing Judgment of Desire Learn, then, through simple practice to interpret the patterns you have learned from this illusory world, so that you release judgment of the energy of desire. This will be different for each and every one, depending on where you begin. 
Here is a very simple exercise. When you awaken in the morning and you have planted your feet firmly on the floor, take pause and ask yourself this question. What do I want right now? Right now, the mind will say, well, I'm too busy to know what I want. I have to go off to work. I have to serve everyone else. I'm here to satisfy the world. I have no time to ask myself what I want. Remember that what you decree is, and the thought you hold in mind will be reflected through the nature of your experience. So take pause and ask, what do I want? Then simply give yourself one minute to observe whatever comes up in your mind and even is felt in your body. Heaven forbid you might want to have sex. Oh, then you would know for sure that you are not a spiritual being. You might want to take a hot shower. You may want a glass of juice or water. You might want to sing. You may want to stretch or breathe. You might want to turn and look at your lover, your maid still sleeping in the bed. You may want to arise and sneak into your children's room and watch them sleep. You might want to sit down and read the morning paper. The point here is to notice that by asking the question, something will respond within you. And when that response comes, notice that there is a feeling associated with it, a quality that makes your cells sing a little bit. That is the energy, the elixir of life called desire. In this one minute, you need not rise to act, but to simply observe. Oh, what do I want? Take a hot shower. The feeling of the thought or the thought that emits the feeling in the body, I want to take a hot shower, is carried on the elixir of desire. Desire is coming from the depth of your being that, again, rests right next to the face of God. Might it not be the case that by following the desire that wells up through your heart, by feeling it, by embracing it, you might learn and discover what the ocean is wishing to express through the wave that you are. If you judge desire, might you not be shutting off the creative flow that the mind of God wishes to express? Of course, that is the problem. You have tied the hose in a knot throughout conflicted judgments. Here is a very common one in your world. Be honest with yourself. How many times have you felt the desire to be wealthy? It is not something you are supposed to sit around and talk about or make very public, especially if you are trying to be spiritual. You may have thought, I woke up this morning and I just imagined having so many gold coins that I could buy the entire planet. Then you remembered, oh, money is the root of all evil. I can't think like that. Well, I better get busy and get off to my office job. That secretly inside I really resent because they don't pay me what my soul is worth. But I'll pretend like I'm quite fine. Oh, money? No. No, I'm quite fine. I really have enough. No, no, I'm really quite fine. Then as you drive home and a Mercedes pulls up alongside you, you cannot help but turn and say, God, I wish I could afford one of those. Then you think, oh God, I can't have that thought. So I'll just drive my old Volkswagen down the road, but I'm being a very good spiritual person. Be honest with yourself. How many times have you felt welling up within you the desire to be wealthy? What on earth has caused you to fear that desire? What has caused you to tie the hose in the knot so that you try to block the desire from coming into manifestation? Perhaps when you were a child, you went to one of your cathedrals, and there was someone in a long robe standing up on a platform, and because everyone looked so beautiful, you thought surely that they must have been speaking with authority. Since this cathedral was filled with a whole lot of small little minds that were all living in their own level of fear, they said, Money is the root of all evil. And you thought, Oh, well, that is the truth. Oh, yes, that's the truth. Oh, God, I had better fear money. I say unto you, you have one authority, and it is never held when the office of any church, any organization, or any individual. Your authority is the voice of God that dwells within your heart and within your mind. God is not limited and does not require his children to be limited. But if you would receive all that God would give you, you must decide to rise up and be the grandest way that you could possibly be. For only in so doing do you honor your Creator. You could say that God is like a wise gardener who is constantly trying to grow beautiful roses. She knows exactly how much moisture to put in the soil. She knows how much of these nutrients to rise from the soil through the roots, up through the heart of the stem of the flower to give forth radiant color, so that everyone that looks upon it is touched by the mystery of beauty. And God wonders, well, it is interesting. These roses that I have created seem to have a mind of their own. As the elixir I tried to give them rises through the stems, they tie themselves in little knots, and only a little bit of that elixir reaches out, so the petals never quite blossom fully. Have you ever had the feeling that you are putting more energy into staying constricted than you are into allowing expansion? Desire links you to the will of God. Desire is creation. Therefore, what you desire is of supreme importance. If you will take the little exercise that we have given you and begin to put it into practice upon awakening in the morning in a very simple and quiet way, 
you will begin to get back in touch with the innocence and beauty of the movement of desire. You can delight in it. When you have a sexual thought, a sexual desire, why not just be with it? Why not notice what it causes to happen in the body? How does your breath change? Does the heart beat faster? Be honest with yourself. Is it not putting a smile on your face? What if you decided to be honestly embrace that effect as being perfectly innocent and beautiful? How might your day change if you did not repress awareness of sexual desire? You will notice we are not saying you should walk down the street and grab everybody that walks by you. We are talking about allowing yourself the living embrace of exactly what energy is moving through your being. Why is this important? If you have decided that there are certain energies that are demonic, evil, or have the power to distract you from your union with God, you have already decided there is something beyond the reach of your power. And that is what disempowers you. You take an innocent energy and turn it into a monster that must be feared at all cost. Yet I say this unto you, the mystical transformation that carries you from feeling yourself to be a disempowered little drop of foam on the edge of the wave, to the sense of freedom and empowerment living that flows from the mind of God through you to express only beautiful creations filled with majesty, power, and miracles, is willingness. The willingness to turn to very energies that move through the mind and the body, and to not fear them, but instead to look upon them with innocence and wonder. This is the source of the myth that have been told in all cultures, the knight that slays the dragon, or kissing the wild beast on the cheek, and it becomes a loving companion. Your monsters are what you fear and repress because of the judgments you have learned in the world. And the world is only the denial of the kingdom. It is the exact opposite of truth. If you are sitting in one of your cathedrals and everyone is saying, sexuality is very bad, it will keep you from God, Right away you should realize if everyone here fears sexuality, it must actually be divine. Allow yourself to think, perhaps I would do well to embrace it, love it, master it, and not fear it. Imagine someone says unto you, money is the root of all evil, and then puts out his hand and said, would you please make a donation to our organization? Is that not an expression of conflict? Yet such conflict permeates the religious and dogmas of our world, which say, don't desire money, don't desire wealth. By the way, to keep the ministry on this radio station, we really need you to send a donation. What are they trying to teach you? What are they in denial of? Sex and money, pretty basic things, aren't they? They represent energies that flow from the mind of God, which would express an unlimited joy and power and not be willing to settle for limitation of any kind. When the earth was birthed from God's holy mind and took on its own form and became an entity just like you, God did not say, well, this is a pretty beautiful planet, but I can only have a solar system just large enough for the earth. Rather, out of joy, God allowed there to come forth solar system upon solar system upon solar system, the birthing of a thousand suns every moment, as a field in which this beautiful jewel of a planet could spin. That is true creation. What quality of solar system have you decided to allow, in which the planet of your own awareness can spin, live, and express? Desire is everything. The simple exercise we have given you will begin to free up the blocks within you, and you will rediscover the innocence of desire. Then you can begin to expand upon it to take a few moments to learn to live deliberately, asking yourself, what do I truly want? Use your consciousness to relax into the innocence of the question. What do I truly want? What is it in my heart that keeps calling to me, keeps compelling me? Because your mind shines forth like a sunbeam to the sun from the mind of God, when you ask the question, Pictures will begin to arise, feelings will begin to arise. And I say unto you, they are symbols and expressions of what God wants to bring forth through you. You may say, every time I look into my heart and every time I allow myself to feel it, what I really want is to put my arms around people. I want to let people know how much I love them. Why fear such a desire? Do you say, it is too overwhelming, I don't know how I will be accepted? Who cares how you will be accepted? What matters is how you accept yourself. What if by feeling that desire, new pictures begin to come to you? For example, suddenly you realize, what I want to do is join the Peace Corps. Perhaps the very decision would be like putting yourself in a solar system where you can spin as your own planet. What if going and being in the Peace Corps could be the very pathway through which you learn to receive the great gift of letting your love out to the world? But if you fear desire, how can you ever know these things? What comes up for you by asking that question? It might be, I want to have so much wealth. And I see the thought that says, oh, no, wealth is bad. But if you allow yourself to continue to ask the question, a deeper answer will emerge, such as, what I want is to be able to go to all the hungry children on the planet and feed them. That's why I want to be wealthy. 
Could it not be that the desire to feed the world is God's desire to speak through you, to use you in a way that affects transformation upon the planet? Can you see that by blocking the feeling of desire, you might just be blocking yourself from hearing what you keep praying for over and over again? You pray, Father, reveal thy purpose to me. Then you feel the desire and say, Oops, excuse me, Father, I have to get rid of this desire first. Desire in the heart is where you will discover the phone line that links you to the will of God that would be expressed through you. If you do not trust desire, you have literally saying that you have not decided to trust your Creator. That is a statement not just to be brushed aside. In healing the conflict around desire, now that you know what it truly is, learn to be patient with yourself. An exercise in trusting desire. We would suggest that you create a structure by which a second exercise can be practiced that fits into your life. Again, it need not take more than 5, 10, or 15 minutes initially, perhaps 3 or 4 times a week. Eventually, you will be doing this all the time because you will be creating deliberately. For just 10 or 15 minutes, set aside your world. Remember that you need to do nothing so the world can wait. Relax the body and close the eyes. It can be of great benefit to let the breath become very deep and rhythmic. It relaxes the nervous system and seduces the controller within your mind, the critic that decides what thoughts are acceptable and which ones are not. By the way, the critic is never something you created. It is something you let live in your mind that was made up by a lot of other fearful minds called parents and teachers. As you relax the body and the mind, ask yourself, What do I truly want? Observe the images that come without judgment. Notice the feeling in the body and allow this to go on for just a minute or two. Then pause, open the eyes, write down all that you can remember. For example, I saw the image of having 47 sexual partners. I saw the image of having golden coins rain down upon me so that I had to have an umbrella over my head. I saw huge bowls of ice cream. I saw myself in a boat on the ocean. I noticed that my stomach got tight. Whatever it is, write it down. Then take a deep breath, relax again, and repeat the process. Place the hand so that it rests on your heart. Breathe into it a few times and then ask, What do I truly desire? Again, allow the process to be what it is. Do this over a period of 10 or 15 minutes so that you repeat the process at least six or seven times, writing everything down. Then take a piece of paper or journal and put it aside until the next exercise period and again repeat the process. When you have done this seven times so that you have seven sheets of paper in which you have gone through this process, then and only then begin to look back through all these things that come up. Ask yourself, what seems to be repeating itself? You might notice that three times you wanted a huge bowl of ice cream, but then it seemed to fade away. Twice you had a desire for 47 lovers, but now you notice that you only really want one. Whatever it might be, notice the pattern, the thread that seems to run through the most throughout the exercise period. Then imagine the thread to be the energetic link that is tied at one end to the piece of foam on the edge of the wave, and the other is anchored to the depth of the ocean. Then consider that, perhaps, if you allowed yourself to move down that thread, to begin to put your energy on that, to begin to clear up the obstacles within your consciousness that blocks a desire from being consistently lived from, you would carry yourself from the drop of foam at the edge of the wave to the heart of God. And along the way, everything unlike love would come up for you to release it. During the process, you would go through a metamorphosis that would culminate in your being the living incarnation of the power of Christ. Your soul would realize a fulfillment that it has always sought. For you see, the reason you have cleverly decided to trick yourself into blocking the energy desire is that the soul knows that where to follow such a thread through whole and total commitment, it will be embarking on the pathway set before you by God that knows how to take you home. If you arrive at home, it will mean that you will have had to give up being a seeker. You will have had to become one who is found, and you will have to rise above the crowd. You will have to give up all your identity with smallness. You will have to give up needing the approval of others. You will have left the nest of insanity. You will have arisen and taken up your rightful place at the right hand of God. It is not that the deepest fear you carry to actually be the truth of who you are, Christ incarnate. Desire can be much fun. Ideally, once you have practiced this on your own, ask your mate or close friend if they would be willing to embark on this process with you, so that perhaps once a week you can sit down together and say, What did you come up with this week? It is called undressing in front of a friend. It is called becoming vulnerable with another. It is called finding another child to play with in the kingdom, so that you can go to the sandbox away from the adult world that says, Desire is bad. You guys be careful. You begin to look at what is true and real from the place of innocence. 
you begin to create for yourself a support group. And that support group perhaps can grow to three or four friends or even ten or twenty, in which everyone is involved with getting in touch with what is really in there. By understanding the principle of desire is the thread that links your soul to the heart of God. And God wants only to extend through you that which expresses love in the world. It is called creation. Perhaps it is a worthwhile project, for when you do not turn to allow the embrace of the desire, there is only one alternative. It is to live in mere survival. When you choose the energy of mere survival, the world is your master, before which you will be made to bow again and again, again and again, again and again, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. You will be a slave to the insanity that seems to rule this world, and you will never know peace, you will never know joy, and you will never come home. Plain and simple, but you were not created to wither and die in the vine. You were made to bear forth much good fruit. Let the roots be watered by desiring, above all things, to become the fulfillment of what God had in mind when he breathed into you the breath of life. Let that breath be received in each moment. You will come to see that the only question, the only question you need to be preoccupied, which is this, how much of God am I willing to receive and allow to be expressed through me? It is called separating the wheat from the chaff. The chaff is the thinking of the world that would have you believe in smallness. This can only result in your perpetual suffering. The wheat is the food that gives life, because it is filled with the love of God. Fear not, then, desire, but desire to embrace desire. Touch it, feel it, know it, dance with it, sing with it, look at it innocently, feel it wholly, and then learn to discern, through the ways we have given you, what desire is truly, that thread that is shining forth through all of your days, then decide to let the desire inform your choices, so that you create a life that serves the fulfillment of that thread of desire. I had to do the same, for I began to notice that there was a thread of desire in my heart to create some form of demonstration that would be so overwhelming that anyone who turned their attention to it could not help but be reminded that there is something far greater than life than living to survive and surviving just to live. Even when I was young, I began to get glimpses. At first, they were fleeting. Something was compelling me, and as I learned to trust desire, the pictures became clear and clear. In those moments of revelations when I was still but a teenager, I saw myself standing on hilltops surrounded by multitudes, and I marveled at the words that came through my mouth. I saw glimpses and pictures of being loved by millions. I saw pictures and things that I could never even comprehend, because they were literally pictures of what I am doing now. And how could a teenager living in Judea 2,000 years ago have any way of comprehending the use of the technology of your modern world in which to communicate love? It made no sense to me, but still I decided to trust it. A part of that thread was the recognition that death is unreal. Therefore, I thought that I ought to be able to create a demonstration that would prove it. Now think about that for a moment. If that thought was born in you, and you tried to share it with the world, would you not be told you were crazy to dare to think a thought so out of line with everything the world believes? But because I followed the thread of desire, I began to realize that it kept speaking to me day after day, week after week. It wanted to grow. It wanted to be nurtured. Finally, I decided, I am going to allow that thread to be nurtured. I am going to discover where it takes me and what it is all about. Where it took me was into the mastery of life and death mastery of healing, mastery of consciousness. It took me into mastery of myself. It brought me home to my own Christed beingness. Because I followed that thread, I can talk with you today. There are many of you that appreciate what I have done because you see me as a spokesperson for the truth. Is it not time that you followed your own thread and became likewise a spokesperson for reality? For just as you have been sent to me, there will be many sent to you as you step from being a seeker to a finder. For as you take up your rightful place, you become a vehicle through which the voice for God will creatively touch the lives of countless persons that you may never, ever meet physically. You were birthed to be grand. You were birthed for greatness. You were birthed for shine forth such light into this world that the world remembers that light is true and darkness is an illusion. Be you therefore in which you are. You are the light of the world, and I will delight in journeying with you. I can join with anyone who chooses to step into their own Christness. The connecting thread is the thread of desire. Therefore, begin to turn toward the energy desire within yourself to separate the wheat from the chaff by first learning to feel it for just a moment without judging it, and then to deepen that process. You will reach the point where with every breath that you breathe you are in touch with the energy of desire, and that is the only voice it will ever give authority to. 
You will not be able to keep up with the loving creation it wants to express through you. You will marvel at the friends that come into your life and how your external solar system in which your planet is spinning changes. You will marvel and wonder how it is all happening. You will finally discover that you are not the maker and doer of your life, that God wants to direct and make life through you. Then you will know the truth that sets you free. Of myself I do nothing, but my Father through me does all things, and it is very good. Be you therefore at peace, and desire well. For when you feel desire, you are watering your roots with the energy of life itself. Trust it, embrace it, and let the petals of the rose blossom within your holy being. We love you, and we are with you. If you could only see how much enlightened help there is surrounding you at any moment, you would never allow the fear of going astray with your desire to be victorious within your mind. You would step forth with boldness, and all things would be made new again. How much of God's love are you willing to receive? Amen.